Okay, welcome back Science 30s to our next lesson in chapter five, this is 5.6. And today we're gonna to talk about parallel and series calculations. In the last video, we talked about the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. And we can say in, see in series that these two light bulbs are connected one after another. And in parallel, a wire splits into two and goes into two parallel wires with the light bulbs on each one. Last video, we talked about drawing the diagrams, and now we'll look at how the calculations of voltage, amps, and resistance change in both series and parallel circuits. So let's first start with voltage. So if different uh, batteries are hooked up in series, their voltage total is calculated by the voltage of one plus two plus three. Basically all the batteries uh, voltage added together will give us the total for this series circuit. So if I connect a battery, um, let's take three batteries and hook them all in series. So I connect them all with a wire. If this one was nine volts, that one's nine volts, and that one's nine volts, I just add them all together, and the total voltage would be 27 volts. This is actually similar to something we already did. We talked about how one straight line and one short line represented one cell. And this nine volts right here is representing a two cell battery. It's showing one cell hooked up in series to another cell, just like right next to each other in a two cell battery. So this would be like a 4.5 volt cell and another 4.5 volt cell make up a nine volt battery. Now we're just putting multiple nine volt batteries together to get a total of 27 volts. So that's when they're hooked up in series in parallel. If the battery's voltage are all the same, the voltage is actually going to be equal all the way across. So voltage total is the same as voltage one, which is the same as voltage two, which is the same as voltage three. Again, if they're all the same. So it might seem a little confusing from that formula, but basically what it's saying is if I take those same nine volt batteries and I hook them all up in parallel like this, and all of them are nine volts, the total voltage of the circuit will just be the nine volts. Okay, because they all are hooked up in parallel. They're not all adding one after another. Now, you might think, well, if you could hook these up in parallel and only get nine volts or hook them up in series and get 27 volts, why wouldn't you always hook them up in uh, series so you always got more voltage? And the idea is that if you hook it up in series, we will have a higher voltage, but the batteries are going to last less time because they're pumping up uh, that much voltage the whole time. If you hook it up in parallel, it's not going to be putting out as much volts, but it is going to last longer, that uh, these batteries are not going to drain as quickly. So some advantages there to each type of circuit. Next, let's take a look at resistance. So for resistance, the formula is kind of similar to voltage when it's in series. The resistance total is R1 plus R2 plus R3. So I have two, just two resistors in this case, and you just add up how many you have. So I have this resistor, which has three ohms of resistance, this one, which has three. I would just add those together, three plus three, and the circuit has six ohms of resistance. It gets a little bit more complex when we go into parallel. This may look like a bit of an intimidating formula over here, but it's one over R total is one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3, and so on and so forth for how many resistors. So let's take a look at what that looks like if you were to apply it to an example. So I'm going to take that same circuit from above, but now I've put in the resistors as hooked up in parallel. There's still going to be three ohms, but let's look at what the total resistance is going to be. So sometimes it helps to kind of imagine this whole thing, this whole section right here with two resistors in parallel as one resistor. And that's what we're really calculating here, how much resistance would come from that. And following the formula, I put one over RT, is equal to one over the resistance of my first one, three, and one over the res resistance of my second one, which is also three. Then we have to do some work with fractions. So one over three plus one over three is two over three. And then I just have to solve for RT because I haven't solved for that yet. I've solved for one over RT. So I'm just gonna flip both of these, flip the R uh, T over one and flip three to over two. And RT over one is the same as RT. If you take a number divided by one, it's the same thing. So if I had five over one, I could rewrite that as five. I'm rewriting RT over one as just RT. That's equal to three over two. And just to uh, turn that into a number instead of a fraction, three over two is 1.5. So this circuit 
has a resistance of 1.5. So I know that can be a little bit complex, just recapping, one over RT is equal to one over your individual resistance, okay? Once we find those, you get in a fraction that you can add together and then flip the uh, numerator and the denominator to make this easier to solve for RT, and then we get our total number at the end, 1.5, okay? And lastly, we're gonna look at current, and current is going to be based off of the overall voltage and the overall uh, resistance that you found. And it is gonna be a little bit different in series and in parallel, and in parallel also different at different points. So let's investigate that, as I think this could be the hardest section to calculate. Okay, so we're gonna start with through series, and the current will be the same current through the entire series circuit, okay? So if I hook up these same resistors that I saw in the last example, and I was trying to solve for what the current was, okay, I would have to figure out first the total resistance and the total voltage. This time it gave me only one battery, 12 volts, but if it gave multiple batteries, I would have to calculate what the total was there. To find the total resistance, in this case, again in series, three plus three would be six, so the resistance total is six. Now that I know the volts of the circuit, and the resistance of the circuit, I can use Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR. Rearrange for I with V over R to get my current, and I get 12 volts over six ohms, it gives me my current of two amps. And that would be the same if I measure it here, or if I measure it here. Because again, as it said at the top, it's gonna have the same current throughout the entire series circuit. So amps here is two, amps here is two, it's all going to be two amps, okay? So that's for a series, it gets a little bit more complicated for parallel, so let's do an example with that. So when it's parallel, the current is going to split into separate wires. So if we have two parallel wires, the current is going to divide into those parts and its total amount is going to be broken up into parts. Let's see what that looks like with an example. Uh, how we're gonna calculate it is use Ohm's law to calculate the current through each parallel wire and remember that it's the same across the whole parallel wire. Let's again take a look at that in an example. So the same as diagrams before where we we're calculating resistance, three ohms here and three ohms here. Okay, we're gonna start by trying to calculate the current at this point. This is before it has split into two wires. How to calculate the current at this point is to think of this whole section, right, what this wire is gonna flow into as one resistor. So imagine that's just one big resistor that it's gonna flow into. Okay, that means we're gonna calculate it as what's the resistance of this thing to resistors in parallel. So I'd throw out my calculation for calculating that. One over RT is one over R1 plus one over R1. We did this calculation previously. I get one over RT is two over three, RT is three over two, and 1.5. So this is the same as having a series circuit hooked up to an ammeter and then hooked up to a 1.5 ohm resistor. Okay, from there I can say I know the 12 volts, I know the 1.5 uh, resistance, rearrange Ohm's law to V over R is equal to I, I get 12 volts over 1.5, gives me, this is supposed to be an I here, sorry, gives me a current of eight amps. So eight amps would be right here. Okay, so that's how we'd figure out the current at this point. Now we're gonna try and figure out the current at this point. So it's now split into two separate wires, we're gonna try to find the current at this point right here, okay? As I mentioned, that is going to split into separate wires. So the eight amps is going to get into smaller amounts flowing into each wire. How we're gonna calculate that is we know that the voltage across the two parallel lines is the same, okay? So that's what I put in this second point here. It's becoming more applicable to this part of the example. The voltage is the same across each parallel wire. So it's 12 volts in this loop, if we can see that with my pointer, and 12 volt, volts in this loop across this section. Okay, so we have 12 volts and three amps. We're going to try and, or three uh, ohms of resistance. We'll try and find the current there. So V over R is equal to I. 12 over three gives me four. So that means there would be four amps right here. If I did the calculation with this side, it'd be the exact same thing. 12 volts running through three ohms would give me four here as well. And this kind of helps to visualize that we have eight amps 
flowing into these wires and then it splits, kind of like a river splitting into two sides. We have the amount of water flow splitting into four going this way and four going this way. Now it's not always gonna split in two, it splits in two because we do have the same resistance on each side here, but if they were different, uh, we would get different numbers. And that's all that we have for today in this video. So I hope that helps you to understand how to calculate uh, volts, amps, and resistance in series and parallel uh, circuits. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next lesson.